Hello, dear students. Uh, this lecture is about the autonomic nervous system uh, with the abbreviation of the ANS. Also, this autonomic nervous system is referred to the visceral nervous system or involuntary nervous system. ANS uh, is a part of the peripheral nervous system uh, that innervates the smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands. The, this part of the nervous system or peripheral nervous system uh, acts, acts as a control system functioning largely uh, below the level of consciousness. It means that they are controlling the function of the uh, structure that they are not under your control or voluntary control. It means that they are controlling the visceral function. Uh, that's why it's called visceral nervous system. Uh, as you see in this uh, general uh, slide of the autonomic nervous system, the ANS affects the heart rate or affecting the respiratory rate. Uh, they are influencing or affecting the function of the digestion, uh, salivation, uh, the uh, production and secretion of the tears as in lacrimal gland. They are uh, controlling the diameter of the pupil also. They are uh, controlling the diameter of the uh, vessels. Uh, and also they are playing role for the uh, micturation and also defecation. And uh, at the end, they are uh, uh, regulating and controlling the function of the sexual uh, arousal. Uh, as you see, all uh, this uh, function uh, and these actions, they are involuntary. So, uh, but uh, there are uh, some discussion about the breathing or respiratory function, which uh, can be worked uh, in uh, tandem with the uh, conscious mind uh, as well. Uh, classically, uh, this uh, autonomic nervous system is divided to two subsystems. Uh, one of them is parasympathetic nervous system, and the other is sympathetic uh, nervous system. Parasympathetic nervous system is related to the rest and digest. It means that uh, when you are in the resting position, when you are resting or when you are digesting, uh, the food, mainly the parasympathetic system is working and uh, vice versa, the sympathetic nervous system is related to the fight and flight. So they are uh, acting usually uh, for the uh, situation under the stress, sport, uh, like as you see, the increasing of the heart rate, uh, dilatation of the pupil, uh, sweating, uh, and so on and so on. So this uh, system uh, as a rest and the digest for the parasympathetic and fight and flight uh, for the sympathetic system. They are the two main uh, subsystem of the autonomic nervous uh, system. Uh, also, we are going to discuss also recently, uh, we have the third subsystem of the neurons that they have been named as a uh, non-adrenergic uh, and non-cholinergic uh, neurons because uh, uh, they use the uh, nitric oxide uh, as a neurotransmitter and uh, usually they are uh, uh, the integral part of the autonomic uh, function and particularly they are located in the intestine and lung. Uh, also, we are going to discuss about the enteric nervous system, which is sometimes considered uh, as a part of the uh, autonomic nervous system and sometimes considered uh, as an independent, uh, independent uh, system. So as you see in this uh, general uh, schema of the sympathetic and parasympathetic, both of them, they are, uh, they are uh, uh, containing the two neuron uh, pathway. Uh, the one neuron pathway that they are arising from their origin and uh, they are called periganglionic or parasynaptic or parasynapsing uh, fiber. Uh, and the other fiber 
it's after the uh, this first neuron, which is the presynaptic or the preganglionic fiber, is synapsing with the second neuron, which is located in the ganglion, sympathetic or the parasympathetic ganglion that we are going to discuss. The uh, fiber that they are after this uh, synapsing uh, coming out from this ganglion is called postganglionic fiber. And uh, those postganglionic fiber or postsynaptic fiber, uh, they are reaching to the uh, effector target, which is uh, organ or smooth muscle or uh, glands, and they are uh, affecting on this organ. And this uh, effect for the sympathetic and parasympathetic, they are usually is antagonist to uh, each other. So uh, as a general, if we want to uh, discuss about the autonomic nervous system, uh, we have to mention that this autonomic nervous system provides the neural control of all parts of the body except for skeletal muscle. As you know, the skeletal muscle is under your control. So that's why it's not, can, or it cannot be innervated by the autonomic nervous system. This uh, ANS has the major responsibility to ensure that the physiological integrity of the cells, tissues, and organs throughout the entire body is maintained. This is called hemostasis or hemostasis, which is a very, very important function of the autonomic nervous system in the human being. And uh, uh, also uh, uh, this schema uh, also is uh, saying a very important uh, information about the origin of the sympathetic nervous system and origin of the parasympathetic nervous uh, system. The uh, anatomy of the ANS, which is uh, divided by the uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic, uh, it's uh, uh, called, uh, according to their origin, uh, for the sympathetic nervous system, uh, which is the sympathetic division of the ANS, is called the thoracolumbar uh, outflow. Why is called thoracolumbar outflow? Because they consist of the uh, cell body of the sympathetic uh, nervous system they are located in the lateral horn of the spinal cord as the intermediolateral uh, cell uh, or nucleus uh, in the cell columns of the lateral horn of the uh, spinal cord at the level of the T1 till L2. In some literature, you can see C8 till L3, which is also correct. It means that those uh, level of the spinal cord and that's why the sympathetic division is called thoracolumbar outflow or thoracolumbar system uh, from this uh, t1 till l2 from the lateral horn of the uh, spinal cord they are arising the pereganglionic or presynaptic fiber uh, out of the central nervous system and those cell bodies, they are carrying the general visceral effector or the uh, general uh, visceromotor uh, neurons that they are going toward their uh, ganglion, uh, in this case, the sympathetic ganglion and for the parasympathetic, the parasympathetic ganglion. And uh, we are going to mention, uh, we are going to uh, talk about the different uh, ganglion that we have in the system, uh, sympathetic system, they synapse inside the ganglion, either uh, they call the paravertebral ganglion or perivertebral ganglion. And after synapsing, the second neuron that we mentioned, the two neuron pathway, they are carrying the information to the target, which are can be organ or can be a smooth muscle or it can be uh, it can be the cardiac muscle, or it can be the uh, erector pylorum, the muscle that they are uh, erecting the hair of the uh, body, uh, and it's innervating and it's reaching to the car, uh, to the target. So the postganglionic fiber 
those are the fiber or post-synaptic fiber. Those are the fiber that they are affecting the uh, sympathetic. For the parasympathetic uh, division of the uh, of the uh, ANS or uh, autonomic nervous system, uh, we have another name which is called craniosacral outflows or the craniosacral system because uh, this division, the parasympathetic division, consists of the cell bodies from uh, one of the two locations. One location is located in the brain stem, uh, is the nuclei of the cranial nerve number three, the cranial nerve number seven, nine, and ten. Those are very important, <clears throat> and we are going to discuss. And the other location it's the lateral horn of the spinal cord at the segment of the sacral segment and specifically the s2 s3 s4 so s2 s3 s4 of the sacral spinal cord they have the origin of the presynaptic fiber the nucleus that they are sending the presynaptic fiber that they are reaching in the head region uh, we have the parasympathetic ganglion that there are four ganglion and we are going to discuss which is the ciliary ganglion, the submandibular and pterygoman uh, pterygomandibular uh, pterygopalatine uh, ganglion and finally the uh, otic ganglion and also it can be a ganglion or the parasympathetic is usually uh, uh, for the vagus nerve uh, is usually the ganglion which is near to the wall of the organ is located and also the same for the uh, pelvic splachnic nerves which are the uh, ganglion which is locating is the near and or in the wall of the uh, organs that they are innervated by this uh, uh, parasympathetic and after that of course the post ganglionic fiber they reach to these targets and they are innervating and they are affecting uh, to this organ that you have to know the effect of sympathetic and effect of the parasympathetic in different uh, different organ so <clears throat> this is uh, this is the introduction about the uh, uh, about the uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic division of the ans and uh, this uh, this um, um, controlling or this uh, synaptic organization of the autonomic nervous system uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's affecting the same organ for example you see the heart that it's affecting by the sympathetic and also is affecting by the uh, by the parasympathetic by but uh, they are using the different uh, neurotransmitters and they are uh, often uh, they have the antagonistic uh, effect for example if the cardiac nerves that uh, affecting to the heart uh, with the increasing of the rate and uh, uh, increasing the um, the uh, uh, heart contraction uh, the parasympathetic is the Vice, vice versa or the opposite effect which is decreasing the heart rate and uh, uh, decreasing the intensity of the contraction of the cardiac uh, muscle so uh, vice versa for example in the eye that if sympathetic is dilate the diameter of the pupil the parasympathetic is uh, making the construction of the uh, of the uh, uh, the di diameter of the pupil which is called meiosis and um, midriasis for the sympathetic. So uh, as we said, uh, for the recapitulation, the cell bodies of the parasynaptic motor neurons of the sympathetic uh, system, which is the thoracolumbar system is called, uh, is located at the level of T1 till L2 or sometimes C8 till L3. And uh, their axon, leaves the uh, spinal cord through the thoracolumbar ventral root of the uh, uh, ventral root of the uh, uh, spinal cord and uh, after the short uh, traveling in the spinal nerve uh, they are entering to the uh, to the uh, sympathetic uh, ganglion so uh, uh, 
before entering to the different part of the sympathetic ganglion, uh, they have to enter to the uh, to the uh, paravertebral sympathetic trunk or sympathetic chain, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, connection of the spinal nerve to the uh, sympathetic trunk it's happening via the white rami. Uh, 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 Ramai communication or the uh, white communication communicating branch of the uh, of the uh, branch of the spinal nerve that we mentioned it before and it's called as uh, white because it's myelinated and then the axon uh, terminating in this um, and synopsing with the second neuron or the post ganglionic fiber or post uh, uh, post ganglionic fiber or post synaptic fiber at the different level. And you can see here in the sympathetic system, uh, either we have uh, the paravertebral chain, because this paravertebral uh, chain and the paravertebral ganglion, they are located uh, in the, uh, in the um, two uh, side of the vertebral column, so that's why they are uh, paired, and uh, they are uh, synapting with the postganglionic fiber, this preganglionic with the postganglionic fiber, and then the postganglionic uh, fiber. Either they enter to the to the uh, uh, spinal nerve and is going back to the spinal nerve via the gray communicating branch and is uh, innervating the local blood vessels, the peripheral blood outflow, uh, sweat glands and the uh, erector pylorum. Uh, or another uh, possibility is uh, that it, uh, this pereganglionic fiber, it's uh, going to the perivertebral sympathetic ganglion and these ganglion cells, uh, they are sending the axons uh, along the arterial plexus to the uh, to the uh, intestine, kidneys, and the uh, organs, and providing the innervation of the both organ and their vasculation. So uh, remember uh, the parallel with the vertebral co uh, column, so they call it paravertebral uh, ganglion, uh, which is the periganglionic synapting with the postganglionic, and uh, along the, the large vessel, for example, the celiac, uh, uh, celiac um, uh, trunk, the superior and inferior uh, mesenteric uh, artery, uh, they are uh, an orticorenal uh, uh, arteries. Uh, so they are the perivertebral ganglion that the periganglionic or first neuron is synapting with the uh, second neuron. And uh, we have other um, way also that uh, the periganglionic or peresin, uh, periganglionic fiber, uh, it's uh, directly reaching to the adrenal uh, medullary as an endocrine uh, cells, and uh, uh, they are uh, related to the sympathetic ganglion cells and uh, receiving the direct innervation from the presynaptic uh, sympathetic fiber that we are uh, going to discuss about the different way of the uh, of the distribution of the uh, sympathetic system and the passing of the sympathetic uh, system uh, for the parasympathetic as we mentioned it the paraganglionic uh, in the head region it's related to the four parasympathetic ganglion the ciliary the submandibular and the pterygopalatine ganglion and otic ganglion or uh, the fiber that is related to the vagus and pelvic splanchnic nerve uh, with the center of the S2 till S4, uh, they are reaching to the ganglion that they are near to the wall of the organ. So this is the general uh, information. And of course, uh, we are going to discuss it, uh, the details and uh, uh, more about this uh, pathway. And uh, for the last information about this slide is to, I have to mention that all this ANS or autonomic nervous system and uh, both uh, division, it means sympathetic and uh, parasympathetic uh, division, uh, they are uh, under the central, under the control of the central nervous system uh, via the upper motor neuron, which is 
the cell body is located in the hypothalamus. Here is the diagram of the sympathetic uh, in the red and parasympathetic in the blue uh, for the uh, innervation of the organs in the thorax. thorax. And you are uh, familiar, for example, with the uh, heart uh, uh, innervation of the uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, that they are uh, uh, taking the fiber from the uh, superior cervical ganglion, middle cervical ganglion, and uh, satellite ganglion, which is the connection of the inferior cervical ganglion and the first thoracic ganglion, uh, uh, is the ganglion paravertebral ganglion, uh, which are usually there are 22 to 23 paired ganglion is located uh, here. And uh, the fiber, they are uh, going toward the heart as a as a, a, a cardiac nerves, uh, but uh, the uh, branch of the vagus as a cardiac branch, uh, which is the parasympathetic. Uh, so they are affecting also the, the heart, but, but uh, with the antagonist uh, action. So the increasing the heart rate and the uh, dilatation of the coronary artery by the sympathetic, which is called the uh, the uh, cardiac nerves and uh, um, um, decreasing the heart rate and the constriction of the uh, of the uh, coronary artery uh, via the cardiac branches or rami, uh, which is the branch of the vagus nerve, uh, which is uh, antagonist of the uh, sympathetic. Uh, regarding the upper motor neurons that uh, we mentioned it, uh, the cell bodies of the parasympathetic upper motor neuron are located in the hypothalamus. We said it also is in a sympathetic, also is located in hypothalamus. But this hypothalamus then they are sending the axon, which is descending via the white matter tract and to synapse with the uh, place that they are uh, origin for the parasympathetic. It means that the lower motor neuron, which is located in the brain stem and the sacral spinal cord S2 till S4 segment, uh, remember the craniosacral segment. For the uh, sympathetic, also the center for the upper motor neuron is located in the hypothalamus. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, also is very important but their axon is descending via the white uh, matter uh, to synapse with the, with the motor, uh, with the uh, origin of the uh, sympathetic center, which is called thoracolumbar. It means that the lateral horn of the spinal cord T1 till L2. And uh, here that uh, it will be discussed uh, in the uh, chapter of the, uh, of the central nervous system. Uh, as you see, uh, it's the uh, importance of the effect of the uh, hypothalamus. Uh, the hypothalamus, you know, that uh, is a part of the diencephalon, uh, is a part of the central nervous system. And uh, this is the schema that uh, is showing the increased uh, salivation during the eating. Uh, for example, is the example of the controlling of the hypothalamus to the effect of the uh, of the of the salivation. So when you are eating, the salivation or the production of the saliva is uh, is uh, uh, is uh, happening. So and this is the result from the stimulation of the salivary gland by the parasympathetic nervous system. So we know that the parasympathetic nervous system is increasing the salivation or production of the and secretion of the saliva. To produce uh, uh, the coordinating of the stimulation of the various glands, uh, parotid, submandibular, sublingual, the small salivary or minor salivary gland, the cranial parasympathetic nuclei, they are uh, needing some excitatory uh, impulse from the from the higher center that we mentioned, it is the hypothalamus. And uh, usually this uh, center is called the hypothalamic uh, tuberal nuclei or the mammillary body. So there are the two 
very important higher center in the hypo in the diencephalon that they are controlling and they are sending the excitatory impulse uh, to the parasympathetic nuclei for the uh, oculomotor nerve, the uh, nucleus, the parasympathetic nucleus is the accessory uh, parasympathetic nuclei or Edinger Westphal for the facial nerve is the superior salivatory nucleus for the glossopharyngeal nerve is the inferior salivatory nucleus and for the vagus nerve is the parasympathetic nucleus is called dorsal vagal uh, nucleus. So all this excitatory uh, stimulation, so uh, uh, so it's happening via this diencephalon, via this uh, two tuberal nuclei and mammillary body, is they are sending uh, to increase the flow of the saliva. And uh, this dorsal longitudinal fasciculus that it will be discussed in the chapter of the central nervous system, they are establishing the necessary connection between the higher center is the diencephalon and the lower center, which is the uh, nucleus in the located in the brain stem. So of course, there are another fiber that are playing role for the interconnection of this higher center or the upper motor neuron with the lower motor neuron. And uh, in this uh, diagram also, it's uh, important to see uh, in one side, there is a, a parasympathetic innervation of the, uh, of the uh, uh, wall of the, for example, intestine, uh, and the other side, the sympathetic uh, pathway. Uh, for the parasympathetic, uh, we know that until the le left polyp flexure or splenic flexure, uh, so the parasympathetic that is the territory of the vagus and uh, below that is the territory of the uh, pelvic uh, splachnic nerve, which is uh, arising from the segment S2, L, S3, S4. And uh, uh, as you know, the uh, parasympathetic uh, fiber in this uh, region, uh, uh, the uh, post-ganglionic fiber, uh, and the ganglion of the parasympathetic, they are located in the case of the vagus nerve, they are located in the wall of the organ. So they are uh, in the wall of the organ, uh, they are the, um, the uh, fiber that the press uh, ganglionic fiber, which is usually longer, uh, synapsing with the post ganglionic fiber at the ganglion, which is located in the wall of the organ, and they are making the affecting in the uh, motility of, for example, of the intestine uh, vagus nerve, which is a parasympathetic. It's increasing the peristaltic movement and the secretion in the in intestine. And uh, here, vice versa, the other side, it's the, uh, the um, uh, sympathetic ganglion. Uh, and the sympathetic ganglion, as you see here, from the lateral horn, intermediolateral uh, nuclei, it's sending uh, the preganglionic fiber via the uh, anterior or ventral root of the spinal uh, nerve or from the spinal cord is coming out and is going to the spinal nerve. And after the short course, it's going to the uh, entering to the sympathetic trunk uh, uh, through the white uh, ramus communicans. And uh, when it reached to the sympathetic trunk, we said that we have different scenario. Uh, one of the scenario is that is uh, synapsing with the uh, with the uh, post ganglionic fiber at the level uh, uh, of the uh, paravertebral chain, and the post synapsing uh, uh, neurons they are sending the uh, the axon back to the uh, spinal nerve via the gray communicating or uh, branch or the gray ram uh, ramus communicans to the spinal uh, nerve, uh, to the ventral branch, to the dorsal branch, and uh, to the meningeal branch uh, to supply uh, for the case of the dorsal and ventral branch to supply of the uh, deep muscles of the uh, back in the case of dorsal and anterolateral muscle uh, uh, of the uh, of the uh, of the body uh, for the smooth muscle. Be careful. Smooth muscle 
which are located in the uh, in the wall of the vessels in the peripheral outflow. So it means that the postsynapsing uh, or postsynaptic uh, neurons and uh, uh, sending their axon back to the spinal nerve uh, to via the gray uh, ry uh, rhymus communicans. They call it gray because it's unmyelinated, uh, and this axon they are traveling the spinal nerve to innervate the local uh, or peripheral blood vessels, uh, or uh, they are uh, supplying the sweat glands uh, in the area of the ventral branch or dorsal branch, or they are supplying the uh, erector pylorum, uh, the muscle which is the uh, erecting the uh, erecting the uh, the and the hair of the body. Uh, this is the one of the scenario. The other uh, scenario, as we mentioned it, that uh, this, uh, this uh, paragangulonic uh, fiber that is going via the white communicating branch, it doesn't synapse in the paravertebral ganglion, but it's uh, continue uh, and it reached to the perivertebral sympathetic ganglion. And these ganglion cells, they are, uh, as we mentioned it, they are located at the level of the large vessels like a celiac trunk, inferior, superior uh, mesentery. And uh, these ganglion cells, uh, they send their axon along the arterial plexus. And uh, from this arterial plexus, they reach to the wall of the, uh, uh, for example, here intestine, or it can be kidney or any other organ and providing the innervation of the both the organ and also their vasculation. So this is the two common uh, way of the passage of the uh, sympathetic. As you see, there is one target organ with the sympathetic, with the parasympathetic, uh, which is uh, they have the antagonist, uh, antagonistic action uh, for this, uh, for this uh, matter. Uh, next slide is showing you the uh, control of the peripheral autonomic nervous system, uh, how the pyramid of the higher center is going and is interconnecting to the lower uh, uh, center. It means that the uh, upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron, how they are always, they are interconnecting uh, together. So. Uh, the peripheral actions of the autonomic nervous system uh, are subject to control at various levels, as you see. And the highest uh, level is located in the limbic system. This is very important. So as you see, the limbic system even uh, is the higher center for the, uh, uh, than the hypothalamus that we mentioned that they are controlling the function of uh, salivation, for example, at that uh, previous uh, slide. Uh, so, uh, so the highest level of the uh, controlling of all this system, it's in, located in the limbic system, uh, whose uh, efferent uh, fiber act on the uh, on the peripheral target organ. Finally, for example, here it can be heart, it can be lung, it can be intestine. Uh, also uh, affects the sympathetic tone and the cutaneous or peripheral blood flow. So it's not organ or only, but also it can be a tonicity of the uh, uh, muscular, uh, the smooth muscle of the vascular part of the peripheral uh, part of the body. Uh, and uh, this is uh, through the hypothalamus, uh, this is the hemostasis that uh, I mentioned that is a very important function of the autonomic nervous system. And uh, also the medulla oblongata uh, and the spinal cord. Uh, uh, so uh, they are uh, uh, affected via the higher center uh, to the sympathetic tone. Uh, and uh, they are affecting uh, to the uh, hypothalamus, to the medullary, uh, ob medulla oblongata and spinal uh, cord. The higher uh, the control center, the more uh, complex uh, of the uh, function uh, that we have it. So uh, you will have a lecture about the limbic system, uh, which is uh, uh, receiving the 
signals from the target organs via the afferent feedback uh, to the medulla oblongata hypothalamus and then to the limbic system as you see they are uh, from up to down and from the down to the up they are all uh, related to uh, gather so this limbic system uh, just to uh, for your information is uh, which is ex, uh, uh, exchanges and uh, integrates the information between the uh, telencephalon between the mesencephalon uh, and uh, uh, diencephalon uh, it regulates the drive and effective of the behavior so this limbic system is very very important uh, function for the uh, behavior. Uh, it's the uh, it's playing the crucial role also in the memory and uh, learning. So if you uh, uh, consider, for example, we uh, say uh, shark. Uh, if he uh, if the shark is uh, feeling uh, from some kilometer uh, the the chemicals of the uh, stimulation from, for example, blood. So uh, this uh, limbic system and those system and the connection of those system, it means that it's uh, acting of this shark that is going toward these uh, chemicals uh, that uh, uh, it's, it's, it's the food for him. So, and it's going for the uh, hunting or for the uh, eating of the, uh, of the, of the food. So uh, uh, this is the this is the limbic system uh, most uh, and one of the very important part of the limbic system is amygdala uh, or amygdala which is the subcortical nuclei of the limbic system and is uh, for the processing of the emotion and uh, it is involved in the fight and flight response uh, and also in the uh, sexual uh, pleasure so uh, this is the uh, this is the general uh, structure about the uh, uh, autonomic nervous system uh, for the recapitulation the sympathetic part is called the thoracolumbar uh, as we mentioned the t1 till t2 and here uh, it's cervico thoracolumbar because the c8 and l3 in some literature also they write it the neurotransmitter for the postconglionic fiber for the sympathetic uh, system is neuroadrenaline. The English terminology is the neuro, uh, 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 norepinephrine. Uh, and for the parasympathetic, which is called craniosacral, because the center is located in the uh, brain stem and sacral S2, S4. And the neurotransmitter for post ganglionic fiber uh, uh, is acetylcholine uh, uh, and acetylcholine. And uh, this is the difference between the sympathetic and parasympathetic. As we mentioned that in the lateral uh, horn of the spinal cord, uh, we have the uh, intermediolateral nuclei uh, for the, uh, specifically for the sympathetic part from T1 till uh, uh, L2, sending the uh, pregangulonic fiber via the ventral root uh, to the spinal nerve and via the white communicating branch uh, uh to the uh, to the sympathetic trunk and uh, it's going back to the spinal nerve uh, in the uh, uh, case of the innervation of the periphery uh, it's uh, via the gray communicating branch so the post fiber is going back to the spinal nerve via the uh, via the gray communicating branch and uh, here is the ganglion of the sympathetic trunk that we said that we have the paravertebral ganglion, 22 to 23 pair uh, ganglion in both sides of the vertebral column uh, that uh, uh, usually we have uh, three cervical, 11 uh, thoracic, remember that the uh, inferior cervical and the first thoracic is they are uh, connecting together and they make the satellite uh, 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 ganglion, and then we have the uh, four lumbar and four five uh, sacral, which is at the end. They are connecting these two chain or trunk together uh, to the to the impaired uh, sympathetic ganglion that we are going to discuss. And parasympathetic ganglion, uh, finally, uh, they are uh, for the head region four 
and for the uh, organs, uh, the other organs, they are located uh, near to the wall of the organ that it will be uh, innervated. So as we said, the autonomic nervous system or AN, uh, ANS, it has a uh, two neuron pathway. They have two neuron pathway. Uh, one neuron is called parasynaptic neuron or paraganglionic neuron or fiber that they are uh, arising from the central nervous system in the case of sympathetic in the thoracolumbar system and in the case of parasympathetic in the uh, in the craniosacral system. So from here, uh, the central nervous system, the parasynaptic neuron is arising and is passing to the periphery till it reached to the, for the sympathetic, to the sympathetic ganglion, for the parasympathetic, for the parasympathetic ganglion. So this part, which is uh, shown by the blue color, is called parasynaptic neuron or paraganglionic uh, neurons or paraganglionic fiber. At this level, the neurotransmitters for both sympathetic and parasympathetic is acetyl acetylcholine. So acetylcholine, it's the neurotransmitter at the level of the uh, synopsing of the paraganglionic with the postganglionic fiber. So for both sympathetic and parasympathetic, as you see, is the acetylcholine or uh, acetylcholine. Then the fiber, after it synapses with inside the ganglion, this called postsynaptic neuron or postganglionic fiber. And this fiber is ending to the target organ and is affecting as a sympathetic or parasympathetic. Uh, the same as here, as you see, the parasynaptic it reached to the parasympathetic ganglion and after the synopsing with the postganglionic fiber or postsynaptic fiber, it reached to the target organ. But the difference is that the uh, for the sympathetic division of the ner uh, autonomic nervous system, the neurotransmitters uh, at the level of the target organ is uh, norepinephrine. And for the uh, parasympathetic division of the ANS, at the level of the target organ is acetylcholine. Uh, so this is a different that it's uh, at the level of the target organ after the uh, synopsing of the postganglionic fiber or postsynaptic neuron to the target organ, uh, it happening. And one more in this diagram also you can see that the, uh, the postganglionic fiber or postsynaptic neurons in the parasympathetic division of the uh, autonomic nervous system is shorter than the postsynaptic uh, synaptic neurons or postganglionic neuron uh, for the sympathetic fiber. So this is uh, because that usually the parasympathetic ganglion is uh, located near to the target organ in the parasympathetic division. Uh, but in sympathetic, it, as we said it before, we have the various uh, uh, sympathetic ganglion that we discussed it and we are going to discuss as well. Uh, this is the picture that is showing and we said that there is an antagonism and showing the antagonism of the sympathetic and parasympathetic. Almost all organs, they are equal impact. They have the uh, sympathetic and uh, and uh, parasympathetic, they have uh, their all their uh, equal impact, but there are in some organs that the predominant it's parasympathetic, like a stomach and pancreas is the most innervated by the parasympathetic, and the other is the domination or the dominating is the sympathetic, usually uh, the vessels and the sweat glands uh, or uh, arachter uh, pylorum. Uh, those are the uh, almost the pure sympathetic innervation. So the transmission that we said that is acetylcholine and the norepinephrine. So here, as you see, uh, 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 and uh, uh, as you see, we have the both sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, 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 pregangalionic uh, fiber, as we mentioned it. Uh, they are uh, uh, releasing the acetylcholine. 
which is acting uh, upon the uh, nicotinic receptors inside the gondelion. But uh, here you can see the difference of the parasympathetic and uh, sympathetic. Uh, the sympathetic postgangelionic uh, postgangelionic neuron they are secreting the noradrenergic uh, noradrenaline or the norepinephrine, which is uh, acting upon the adrenergic receptor and this adrenergic receptor we have two types the alpha type and beta type and uh, anyway so uh, they have the different action and uh, usually uh, at the target uh, tissue so they are promoting the effect of this noradrenaline to the receptor b uh, beta or alpha uh, with the different function uh, the uh, neurotransmitter for the for the parasympathetic part at the at the post ganglionic uh, neurons so is acetyl acetylcholine which is acting upon the uh, mus uh, muscarinergic re receptor uh, which is uh, showing by the m uh, and uh, they are for example uh, if the sympathetic in this target organ is making a promotes so the parasympathetic, the same target organ, it's making the inhibition. So they are antagonistic uh, together. And uh, also, uh, there is a details here also, as you see, uh, that this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, neurotransmitters uh, at the level of the postsynaptic uh, nerve ending, uh, they, are, uh, they have a positive and uh, uh, negative feedback loops. As you see here for both sympathetic and uh, parasympathetic. And in this case, uh, they are, uh, they are uh, allowing, uh, allowing the uh, regulation of the releasing of the, this neurotransmission uh, if there is an inhibitory or excitatory uh, and they are regulating the releasing of the neurotransmitter at this level of the, uh, the postsynaptic nerve ending and uh, uh, it's regulating the subsequent neurotransmitter uh, release in this uh, in this picture is showing uh, uh, and here in the next uh, uh, picture that it's uh, shown uh, it's very important function of the sympathetic effect on uh, arteries uh, you know that the, uh, the arteries uh, uh, they are uh, able uh, to contract or dilate. So this is the important function of the sympathetic nervous system, uh, which is regulating the caliber of the arterioles. And in this case, they are regulating the uh, blood pressure. So uh, when the sympathetic uh, fiber uh, releasing the uh, norepinephrine, this norepinephrine is affecting at the alpha one receptor uh, and uh, in this alpha receptor, uh, alpha one receptor, uh, it causing the uh, contraction of the vascular smooth muscle uh, here, as you see, this is the enlargement. And uh, uh, in this case, <clears throat> it's making the contraction of the caliber of the arterioles. And in this case, they are increasing the blood pressure. And at the meanwhile, you see, we have the a uh, beta receptor and uh, uh, the amount of the epinephrine uh, uh, which is uh, uh, is the uh, it is inside the blood uh, is acting on the uh, beta receptor or beta 2 receptors and uh, at the same vascular system or the same arterioles and uh, it's uh, it's uh, causing the uh, dilatation of this smooth muscle cell and uh, in this case, it's causing the, uh, the dropping of the uh, blood pressure. So you see that the, the uh, receptor, the uh, adrenergic receptors, alpha or beta, they have a different function uh, to the effect of the uh, norepinephrine and epinephrine. And uh, also it's important to mention that the parasympathetic fiber do not uh, terminate on uh, blood vessels usually, so you don't see the effect of parasympathetic in this uh, in this area. And here is the general uh, picture how the different fiber they are arising uh, from the neural uh, tube during the development of the nervous system. 
we have the two main parts, the basal plate and the alar plate. Uh, and as you see, the red one, which are uh, you, uh, they are motor, uh, regardless that they are if they are uh, somatomotor or branchial motor or visceral motor, they are arousing from the basal part of the neural tube, and the uh, uh, sensory part or the sensory part uh, of this uh, different fiber, they are uh, arising from the alar plate of the neural uh, tube. And this is the picture that in the introduction uh, we discussed it, and uh, here is shown the lateral uh, horn, which is the place for the location of the intermedial lateral uh, nucleus uh, of the uh, mainly uh, for the sympathetic. It's uh, at the level of the uh, C8 till L3 or T1 till L2, uh, and uh, for the parasympathetic uh, for S2, S3, S4. Uh, they are uh, located at um, uh, nuclei, which are in the lateral horn of the spinal cord. And also we have the diffuse uh, enteral system that uh, we are going to, uh, and is specific for the uh, gastrointestinal tract, and we are going to discuss it in the uh, following slides. And uh, here's the schema, how the pathway is uh, coming uh, from the autonomic for the autonomic nervous system, the preganglionic fiber that or presynaptic fiber or neurons that they are arising from the central nervous system, and here uh, is the uh, sympathetic, for example, that is coming from the lateral horn as the intermediate la lateral nucleus is coming out from the anterior horn and it goes to the ventral root of the spinal nerve. Here it enters into the spinal nerve after short course. It's entering to the sympathetic trunk via white ramus communicans, and either it's synapt synapting with the postganglionic fiber here, uh, which is showing by the blue, and the fiber of the postganglionic fiber, it's returning back to the spinal nerve via the gray ramus communicans, and it's going to the different branch of the spinal nerve mainly the uh, uh, the ventral branch, the dorsal branch, and also the meningeal branch. This is one way of the passage of the sympathetic uh, sympathetic nervous system. The other uh, uh, way is that this uh, preganglionic fiber, when it reaches to the sympathetic trunk and sympathetic ganglion, it doesn't synapse inside the paravertebral ganglion here. But it passing farther, uh, usually uh, via the blood vessels, to the another ganglion, which uh, we mentioned it, that they are located uh, in front of the large vessels, for example, the celiac trunk or superior and inferior mesenteric artery, and uh, they are called perivertebral ganglion. And then after the synapsing with the postganglionic fiber, then they reach to the target organ. Uh, another uh, scenario is that the preganglionic fiber it can ascend up to the from the trunk uh, to the trunk or down descending down to the trunk uh, to uh, to reach the level uh, that uh, it's corresponding to uh, for the innervation of the fiber and then they synapse with the postganglionic that we are going to discuss it. Uh, another uh, uh, way for the uh, passage of the sympathetic. And here is the recapitulation uh, for the preganglionic neuron or uh, presynaptic neuron for the parasympathetic uh, 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 pathway. Uh, so the preganglionic is synapting with the postganglionic fiber and it reached to the target organ. Uh, for the sympathetic ganglion, we said that the preganglionic uh, neuron, they are synapsing with the uh, uh, either paravertebral sympathetic ganglion, and then the postganglionic is reaching to the target organ, or the preganglionic is passing just through the sympathetic trunk or the paravertebral ganglion, but doesn't synapse. It doesn't synapse. Uh, inside the ganglion is going farther, it reached to the uh, larger vessel like a celiac trunk, inferior and superior mesenteric, and then there they are synapsing, uh, they called uh, the prevertebral ganglion, 
uh, with the postglandular neurons, and then it reached to the uh, organs. That uh, we are going to discuss uh, details of this uh, this uh, pathways. The preganglionic sympathetic fiber that enter uh, paravertebral ganglion or entering to the sympathetic trunk through a white ramus communicans, as we said that it's white ramus communicans, they call it, because it's, uh, they contain myelinated fiber. Uh, they may take the following four pathways to the target tissue. The first one, that peripheral sympathetic innervation at the level of origin of the preganglionic fiber. What is that? Here, as we said, is the area of the T1 till T uh, till L2. It's the territory of the sympathetic thoracolumbar system. And they are the peripheral distribution of sympathetic that they are carrying prefer, uh, uh, peripherally by terminal cutaneous branch of the spinal nerve. So here is the area uh, according to this dermatome that you said. Here is selected the segment T10. As you see from the uh, uh, nucleus in the lateral horn of the spinal cord, intermediolateral nucleus, the arise, the preganglionic fiber from the anterior horn. Out it goes to the ventral or anterior root of the spinal nerve. It enter to the spinal nerve, and after a short course, it's entering to the uh, to the uh, 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 sympathetic trunk or uh, sympathetic paravertebral ganglion. Here in the sympathetic para paravertebral ganglion, at the same level T7, it's synapting with the postganglionic fiber, and postganglionic fiber. Here, it's coming back to the spinal nerve via the gray communicating branch, and uh, it enter to the either the posterior uh, branch of the spinal nerve or it enter to the anterior branch of the spinal nerve and is innervating the corresponding area regarding to T10 spinal segment. It means that is innervating the smooth muscle of the uh, vessels around at uh, this area, the peripheral area, is innervating the sweat gland in this area and is innervating the uh, arachnopili muscle in this area. If we consider the same segment at the ventral root in the other anterolateral aspect of the trunk, so there is a innervation for the sweat glands, the smooth mu muscles of the blood vessels, and arachnopili muscle with the corresponding segment at the level of T10 dermatome and supplying the sympathetic in this specific region. So as you see, it's the same level, the peripheral sympathetic innervation at the level of origin of the preganglionic fiber. So here it's the same level and the example is T7. It can be from any of this segment from T1 till L2. The second one, the peripheral sympathetic innervation above or below the level of origin of the preganglionic fiber. It means that the preganglionic fiber that it's entering to the uh, sympathetic trunk or, uh, or paravertebral ganglion via the uh, white ramus communicans, they are not synapsing exactly at that level. They are going up or they are going down. So they are ascending and they are descending. Remember that the white Remy communicants only it happened and uh, in association with the spinal nerve T1 till T till L2. So only at this level you can have the white communicating branch. But the gray communicating branch they are associated with all spinal nerves. It means that all level, they have gray uh, communicating branch, but the white communicating uh, branch is only associated with T1, T until L2. It means that usually the fiber uh, from the spinal cord, cord level, T1 till T5, they are predominantly, they passing 
superiorly. It means that they are ascending through the sympathetic trunk. Uh, and then uh, it's vice versa. The fiber below, it means that T5 till L2, they pass inferiorly. It means that they are descending through this sympathetic uh, trunk. Uh, one important note here, it's mentioned it and we need it for the, when we are explaining the ciliary ganglion, it means that the all sympathetic passing into the head have the preganglionic fiber that emerge from the spinal cord level T1. Again, in some literature, it's called C8 and T1 together. So this is called ciliospinal center. And this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, preganglioni, they are ascending in the sympathetic trunk to the highest ganglion in the neck, which is the superior cervical ganglion. And then there they synapse, and with the postganglionic fiber and postganglionic fiber, they travel along always blood vessels. They have to find the blood vessels to reach to the target organ in the head, and they are. Uh, supplying, if it is in the periphery, they are supplying the smooth muscle of the blood vessel, they are supplying the sweat gland, and they are uh, supplying the small muscles associated with the uh, with the upper eyelid, uh, the dilator of the muscle of the pupil that we are going uh, to discuss it, and uh, is, uh, is uh, damage of this ciliospinal uh, center at the level of CAT1. It can cause a uh, uh, Horner's syndrome uh, that the symptom and sign we are going to discuss. But uh, what we mentioned it, so in the second uh, second uh, 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 variation of the passage of the sympathetic, it's the peripheral sympathetic innervation above or below the level of the origin of the uh, preganglionic fiber. It means that uh, you wish said that from T1 till T5, the uh, fiber that they are arising from the lateral horn and it goes to the ventral root, the white communicating branch, either is synopsing with the postganglionic and then they are ascending to the higher uh, segment, like for example, C2 or C8 here, or they are the fiber that they are arising from the lateral horn at the level of T5 till L2, they are usually uh, descending through the trunk and then they go via the gray rhymus communicans, they reach to the, to the uh, uh, periphery. So it means they are reaching more than the level of the T1 till L2. So as you see, they are innervating the smooth muscles of the uh, blood vessels in the periphery uh, sweat glands and uh, uh, arachnoid pili of this area of the body and also the uh, lower part of the body than the segment of the T1 uh, till L2. So uh, it means that the fiber, they are ascending and they are descending to this level. And as we mentioned it, uh, usually the fiber from the segment, uh, segment uh, T1 till T5 uh, uh, they are ascending, uh, and uh, T5 till L2, they are descending through the sympathetic trunk. And then via the gray communicating, we said that gray communicating branch, they are in all uh, spinal nerve. They are connected with the all spinal nerve. Only the white communicating branch that it has the restriction place and limited place at the level of T1 till L2. So in this case, we can preferably uh, 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 the, the distribution of the sympathetic uh, innervation uh, for the upper trunk and the lower trunk uh, will be uh, happening. The third scenario or the third variation is, or pathway, is that the sympathetic innervation of the thoracic and cervical viscera or organs the preganglionic sympathetic fiber may synapse with the postganglionic motor neurons in ganglion and then leave the ganglion medially to innervate the thoracic or cervical viscera. So it means that they are uh, synapsing uh, in the ganglion and then they leave. Or also they can ascend in the trunk before synapsing 
And after the synopsing, the postganglionic fiber, they find their own postganglionic fiber, and then they combine with the dose previous one, and they make a bunch of the nerves that, for example, you know it as a cardiac nerves, that they are sympathetic and they are affecting to the heart. So often those nerves, they are joining with the branch of the parasympathetic system that in a while we are saying, and in this case, this sympathetic and parasympathetic, they make the plexus on or near to the surface of the target organ. For example, you we discussed in the heart uh, uh, lecture that we have the cardiac plexus, we have the pulmonary plexus, that they are mixture of the sympathetic and parasympathetic, and the branches of the plexus innervating the organ. So the spinal cord level T1 uh, till T5 mainly innervate the cranial, cervical, and thoracic uh, viscera or organ. So this is the schema of the uh, cardiac nerves. It means that the sympathetic distribution, as you see, uh, we said that T1 till T4, sometimes T5 also, they are uh, giving the periganglionic fiber via the white communicating branch. It reach to the uh, sympathetic trunk. It can uh, synapsing with the postganglionic fiber, or it can ascend to the higher level with the superior cervical ganglion or middle cervical ganglion or satellite ganglion. And then after the synapsing, all of them with the postganglionic fiber, they are sending a fiber which are called sympathetic cardiac nerves. Be careful whenever we say cardiac nerves, it means that automatically sympathetic. And here near to the organ, which is heart, they are mixing with the parasympathetic fiber and the parasympathetic fiber uh, together, they make the car uh, cardiac plexus and the sympathetic effect that you know that it's making the increasing the heart rate, which is called tachycardia and coronary uh, vessels dilatation and the parasympathetic, which are called cardiac branches or cardiac rami or rami. It's uh, the branches of the vagus, and it's make the decreasing of the heart rate, which is the bradycardia, and the coronary constriction in the coronary vessels. So this is the third pathway. And the fourth pathway is the sympathetic innervation of the abdomen and pelvic region and the adrenal glands. So this is a different. Uh, the difference of this pathway with the other is that the periganglionic sympathetic fiber may pass through the sympathetic trunk and paravertebral ganglia, but it doesn't synapse there. It's just passing together with the similar fiber at the other level and to form a specific nerve that they are called splachnic nerve. There are three uh, group of the splachnic, thoracic splachnic nerve, which are called greater, lesser, and least thoracic splachnic nerve. And also we have the lumbar and sacral splachnic uh, nerve that they are passing for the innervation of the abdomen and pelvic region. The periganglionic fiber in these nerves, they are driving from the spinal cord. We said that the level, lower level of the T5, it means till from the T5 till L2. And here you can uh, say, say, see how the, uh, the, uh, the ganglion is passing and uh, how the, uh, the sympathetic uh, uh, fiber they are passing. So uh, the splachnic, uh, great splachnic or the nervous splachnic was major, uh, usually they are arising from the segment T6 or uh, till uh, T9. In some literature, you can find T5 till T10 as well. And those nerves that they are traveling through the diaphragm, they are entering the abdominal cavity, uh, very fiber synapsing uh, at the level of the celiac ganglia, uh, at the level of the celiac trunk. The nerve contributes to the uh, celiac plexus, which is mixture of the sympathetic and branches of the vagus, which is the parasympathetic. And they make the network of the nerve located in the, uh, in the uh, nearby of the celiac trunk. 
and the branches for the abdominal uh, from the uh, which is the branches of the abdominal aorta and this fiber the great um, splanchnic nerve they are modulating the activity of the entering uh, uh, entric uh, nervous system that uh, uh, we are going to discuss and is also providing the sympathetic innervation for the adrenal uh, medulla and stimulating uh, catecholamine uh, uh, releasing. So the uh, nervus splanchnicus minor or the, uh, the lesser splanchnic nerve, which is uh, arising usually at the level of T10 and 11, so you can face uh, the T9 and 12 as well, and these nerves, they are traveling inferiorly and lateral to the greater splanchnic nerve. And uh, they are synopsing uh, with the postganglionic uh, uh, part at the superior mesentery ganglion uh, and uh, or in the aorticorenal ganglion as well. Uh, it can happen that uh, this uh, modulating the activity of the also enteric uh, nervous system of the midgut. Uh, the, the greater they are modulating the activity of the foregut, and here is the uh, midgut. Uh, and finally, we have the least uh, 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 splachnic nerve, which is uh, taking the origin from the segment uh, T12L2 or sometimes T11L2. And these nerves that are traveling into the abdomen, uh, where is the uh, fiber they are synapsing in the uh, in the uh, renal ganglion. So uh, uh, those are the splanchnic, the thoracic splanchnic. Uh, also, we have the uh, lumbar and sacral splanchnic uh, nerve that they are arising from the different segment at the level of the lumbar and sacral. Uh, and we said that at the end, the two paravertebral ganglion, they are joining together, they make the ganglion uh, impaired. Uh, so uh, this is this is the this is the uh, structure and why uh, we show this uh, picture to show you that this is plastic nerve. Also, they are containing the the visceral uh, visceral uh, afferent fiber, this green fiber. This visceral afferent fiber that they have the same via uh, this splanchnic nerve. They are going to this prevertebral. Uh, ganglion, so it means that they are not synapsing in the paravertebral ganglion in the sympathetic trunk, but they are passing just uh, through this uh, the uh, paravertebral ganglion and synapsing in the paravertebral ganglion, which is located, as we mentioned it, in the large vessels, usually branch of the aorta, as a celiac trunk, superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric, and aorticorenalic uh, plexus. So they are joining with the parasympathetic and they make the plexuses and they are then the post ganglionic fiber they reach to the to the target. Uh, also, they have the visceral afferent fiber or sensory fiber like a stretch, like a pain that they are carried the same uh, pathway of the splanchnic nerve. They are entering to the spinal nerve through the white communicating branch and they synapse inside the spinal ganglion or dorsal root ganglion as a, a pseudo unibolar cells. And then the, via the dorsal root, uh, this afferent nociceptive uh, uh, fiber, they are entering to the dorsal horn. And then in the central nervous system, the pathway of the pain, if they go to the contralateral part and they go to the central nervous system for the, uh, for the perception of the pain. So uh, remember that those fiber, they don't have, not only they have the uh, motoric, uh, visceral motoric uh, uh, fiber, it means that the motoric pathway, but also they have the uh, visceral afferent uh, 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 fiber that it's entering to the spinal uh, nerve via the white communicating branch. It's synapsing at the dorsal nerve uh, uh, dorsal root ganglion or spinal ganglion, and then it's reached to the dorsal uh, horn of the gray matter of the spinal cord. So this is <clears throat> extremely important. And uh, here is just the recapitulation that to know that we have three cervical ganglion, the paravertebral ganglion, the superior medium, and the inferior, which is joining with the first thoracic, and they make the cervicothoracicum 
ganglion uh, or satellite ganglion. Then we have 10 till 11 ganglion or usually 11 uh, thoracic uh, ganglion, which are responsible for the uh, for the releasing of the uh, splanchnic uh, nerves, the tree that we mentioned it, four, five lumbar and uh, ganglion, four sacral ganglion, and two trunk. Finally, they join together at the apex of the coccyx, and they make the ganglion uh, impair. Uh, if you remember, uh, we uh, mentioned uh, about the uh, about the. Uh, innervation, the sympathetic innervation in the head and neck uh, region. So uh, remember, please, that the center, it's the ciliospinal center, uh, which is at the level of, as I said, T1 or C8 T1. It's in the lateral horn of the spinal cord at this level. So here they are originating the preganglionic parasym uh, the sympathetic fiber, the par the Paraganglionic or parasynaptic sympathetic fiber, and uh, they are going and they are reaching to the uh, superior cervical ganglion. There, they synapse with the post uh, ganglionic sympathetic uh, fiber, and via the uh, passage of the artery, the main artery here in this case is the internal carotid artery. So they are forming, and the branches of that. Uh, specifically for ciliary ganglion ophthalmic artery. Uh, so it passing through the uh, uh, wall of the internal carotid uh, artery and they make the uh, internal carotid plexus uh, parallel with the wall. And uh, they are innervating different smooth muscle and also the blood vessels of the, the smooth muscle of the blood vessels. In this area of the head and neck region, and also there's some uh, smooth muscle that you can uh, see it in the uh, orbital region. For example, the uh, orbitalis muscle, which is located in the inferior orbital fissure, and is responsible to uh, for the uh, for the keeping of the eyeball inside the uh, socket in the eye socket or orbit. Uh, that the damage of the orbitalis muscle or damage of the ciliospinal center, they can cause the Horner syndrome that we said. And in this case, uh, this uh, uh, orbitalis muscle, which is a smooth muscle and is innervated by sympathetic, it will not uh, be um, uh, happening. And it causes the enophthalmus. It means that the retraction of the eyeball uh, to the eye socket or eyeball uh, eye socket or the orbit, so it's called enophthalmus. Also, uh, another muscle which is innervated by this uh, center is the dilator muscle of the pupil, which is making a dilation of the di uh, dilatation of the pupil, which is called midriasa midriasis. And if there is a damage in Horner syndrome, uh, uh, it will not happen, and the pupil is always staying in the contraction position, which is called miosa. Uh, the other muscle is the tarsal muscle, which is related to the uh, eyelid and is elevating the uh, upper eyelid. Uh, and uh, this tarsal muscle also is innervated by sympathetic muscle. And if there is a damage uh, of the ciliospinal center uh, at this segment, it's called Horner syndrome. And one of the symptoms of the, and sign of the uh, Horner syndrome is called uh, Toza which is the dropping of the eyelid. Uh, there are, there, those are the mm, triades of the Horner syndrome that is extremely important. It's the symptom and sign for the Horner syndrome, which is a damage of the sympathetic center at this C8 T1, the ciliospinal center. And uh, it causes Horner syndrome. It means damage of the orbitalis muscle, enophthalmus, damage of the uh, dilator muscle of the pupil, uh, uh, myosa damage of the tarsal muscle, dropping of the eyelid is uh, the uh, ptosa. Also, uh, uh, the vasoconstriction in the region of the face and neck, uh, it will not happen if there is a damage of the sympathetic. So you see the flushing and redness of the skin uh, at the, this area of the head and neck. And also uh, uh, the sweat gland, it will not innervate it by the sympathetic. Uh, innervation of in the face region, so the skin it becomes somehow uh, dry, which is called anhydrosis. 
uh, those are the uh, symptom and sign of the uh, Horner's uh, syndrome uh, uh, if the sympathetic part, the ciliospinal center is not working at this segment. And the main ganglion for that, it's the superior cervical uh, ganglion. Uh, the role of the medium and the cervicothoracicum, it's, for example, you are familiar uh, with the innervation of the uh, heart and cardiac plexus and the rest we already mentioned. So uh, recapitulation for the splanchnic nerve, those are the generally connecting with the sympathetic ganglia around the root of the major artery. So uh, they are not the ganglia that they are uh, belong to the paravertebral ganglion. They are called paravertebral ganglion because they are the, around the roots of the major artery branch of the abdominal aorta. And this uh, ganglia is a part of the large paravertebral plexus uh, because they are taking the input from the parasympathetic part of the autonomic division of the peripheral nervous system. And postganglionic sympathetic fiber are distributing in extension of this plexus, plexus predominantly al al along the arteries. Uh, be careful, the postganglionic sympathetic fiber is usually is parallel with the wall of the artery it reached to the target, which is in this case of the splanchnic nerve for the organs of the abdomen and uh, pelvis. And uh, finally, the last uh, way uh, of the uh, uh, pathway of the sympathetic is that some of the pereganglionic fiber of the paravertebral plexus uh, do not synapse in the sympathetic ganglia. So not paravertebral, not paravertebral and plexus, but they pass through this system without synapsing and it reached to the suprarenal gland or adrenal gland uh, where they synapse directly with the cells of the adrenal medulla. So these cells in the adrenal medulla, they are homologous of the sympathetic postganglionic neuron and they are secreting the catecholamines, adrenal and neuroadrenaline into the vascular system. So those are the uh, different past sympathetic uh, pathway that I uh, wanted to show you. Parasympathetic system. Regarding the parasympathetic division of the autom autonomic uh, nervous system, uh, this parasympathetic part leaving the cranial and sacral region of the central nervous system in association with the uh, cranial, four cranial nerves. One of them is number three oculomotor nerve. The other is number seven facial nerve. The other is uh, number nine glossopharyngeal nerve and cranial nerve number 10 vagus nerve. Uh, these uh, four uh, uh, cranial nerve, three of them, it means three, seven, and nine, they are carrying the fiber to a structure within the head and neck only, but the cranial nerve number 10, vagus nerve, also innervating the thoracic and most of the abdominal uh, organ that we are going to discuss it. The territory of the vagus is finishing uh, at the level of the left colic flexure when the transverse uh, colon is finishing and the uh, descending colon is originated. So uh, from this level, down and distally, uh, the parasympathetic innervation is uh, for the this innervation, the uh, uh, another center for the parasympathetic, which is the sacral segment, segment S2, S4, uh, that they are uh, coming, uh, the preganglionic parasympathetic fiber, um, they are sending the special visceral nerves as a, a pelvic splanchnic nerves, uh, which is uh, originated from the anterior ramus of the S2-S4 and entering to the pelvic extension of the large prevertebral plexus, uh, which is formed around the abdominal aorta. And uh, this uh, fiber uh, usually distributing to the pelvic region and the uh, rest of the abdominal uh, part or organ uh, and in uh, organ of the gastrointestinal uh, system, uh, specifically the pereganglionic fiber, they don't have 
post-ganglionic parasympathetic motor neuron in the pathway. So instead of that, the preganglionic fiber and the gastrointestinal uh, tract, they are directly uh, on the neuron in the ganglion of the entering, uh, uh, enteric system that we are going to uh, discuss. So uh, regarding of this uh, preganglionic parasympathetic motor of the cranial nerve number three, uh, seven and nine, uh, they are separating from the nerve and connecting with the one of these four uh, parasympathetic ganglion, uh, ganglia, which is the ciliary ganglion, uh, pterygopalatine ganglion, otic ganglion, and submandibular uh, uh, ganglion. So uh, they are uh, they are inside this ganglion. Uh, they are located the postganglionic motor neuron, and uh, these four ganglia they are near to the major branch of the cranial nerve number uh, five, which is the trigeminal nerve. So it means that the postganglionic fiber. Uh, uh, leave the ganglion and you and uh, uh, always they are joining with one of the branches of the uh, trigeminal nerve uh, and uh, carrying it to the target uh, tissue. For example, this target tissue it can be uh, salivate, uh, salivatory gland, mucosal gland, lacrimal gland, or some constrictor muscle of the pupil uh, or ciliary muscle of the eye and uh, uh, all uh, this structure is innervated and is carried by one of the branch of the trigeminal nerve, uh, which is carrying the post-ganglionic or post-synaptic parasympathetic uh, fiber. Uh, regarding the, ve uh, the vagus, uh, we are going to discuss it. Uh, that is not the head and neck, it's, it's a territory, but also the thorax and most of the abdominal viscera. Uh, it's it's uh, territory and about the pelvic splanchnic nerve. Uh, we also uh, uh, we discussed that this another center of the parasympathetic division, which is the craniosacral uh, system. It is uh, so uh, here uh, you can uh, see the relationship of the these four uh, parasympathetic ganglion that already I mentioned it, and definitely. Uh, this parasympathetic ganglion, this four parasympathetic ganglion, uh, always is the place that the preganglionic fiber from one of these three cranial nerve, they are synapsing inside the ganglion and the postganglionic fiber, they are coming out from this ganglion and it's joining with the one of the branches of the trigeminal nerve and it's reaching to the uh, target. Uh, organ and we are going to discuss one by one the detail of this um, uh, this parasympathetic ganglion and after that we go through the vagus and we explain the enteric system and uh, then the pelvic splanchnic uh, nerve from the parasympathetic division. So uh, here you can see the uh, explanation of the uh, of the ciliary ganglion. The ciliary ganglion is the small uh, ganglion, which is uh, located uh, approximately two centimeter behind the uh, eyeball and usually is located lateral to the optic nerve and is embedded inside the uh, fatty tissue. Uh, so uh, remember, whenever you have the parasympathetic ganglion, you have to describe three nerves or three fiber. Uh, one fiber is parasympathetic, which is always the preganglionic fiber is synapsing inside this ganglion uh, with the postganglionic, and this postganglionic is uh, fiber is carrying the postganglionic fiber and effector fiber via one of the branches of the trigeminal nerve to the uh, uh, to the uh, uh, target, which is for the case of the ciliary ganglion is the sphincter muscle of the pupil and the ciliary muscle. Uh, and also you have to explain the sympathetic root of the ciliary ganglion, which is just passing through the ganglion. It doesn't synapse inside the uh, ganglion. And also finally, uh, you have to describe the sensory root of the ciliary ganglion that also is just passing and travel through the uh, ciliary ganglion without any synapsing. So the only fiber that is synapse uh, inside the parasympathetic ganglion is the preganglionic parasympathetic fiber. 
and the rest of the fiber, it means the sensory and sympathetic, they are not synapsing inside the uh, ganglion. This is the first thing. Uh, second thing, the, remember that the postganglionic for all parasympathetic fiber, uh, it's carried by the one of the branches of the trigeminal nerve. The third important uh, uh, information is that the sympathetic route for the each parasympathetic ganglion is always ar arising from the ciliospinal center that we already discussed. It's the lateral horn at the level of segment C8 and T1. Uh, and it's uh, the preganglionic is arising from this segment and is, uh, uh, is going to the superior cervical ganglion. There is preganglionic sympathetic fiber is synapsing with the postganglionic fiber at the superior cervical uh, uh, ganglion. And then the postganglionic fiber, sympathetic fiber, it's carried by the internal carotid plexus and the branches, and in this case is ophthalmic uh, artery, is reaching to the ciliary ganglion and this post ganglion is just passing through this ganglion and uh, it's reaching to the target organ that we already mentioned, uh, did, uh, uh, the uh, orbitalis muscle, uh, tarsal muscle, and, uh, uh, and the dilator muscle of the pupil, uh, which is the damage of that uh, sympathetic part is making a Horner's uh, syndrome. And this is the very nice schema that is showing you uh, all these three fiber that I uh, mentioned it. So one of them is the uh, oculo, uh, the parasympathetic fiber. So the parasympathetic root for the ciliary ganglion, uh, it's uh, the preganglionic fiber uh, is uh, originated from the parasympathetic nucleus of the cranial nerve number three, oculomotor nerve, which is called Edinger-Westphal nucleus, or another name is accessory oculomotor nucleus. So from this uh, nucleus is arising the preganglionic fiber and uh, is reaching to the ciliary ganglion and it's synapsing with the postganglionic fiber and postganglionic fiber after the synapsing here is reaching to the short ciliary nerve. This is a branch of the trigeminal nerve, the V1, the ophthalmic nerve, and it reaching to the target, which are the sphincter muscle of the pupil for the construction of the, uh, of the pupil, for the narrowing of the pupil, which is called meiosis, and, uh, um, and uh, also for the innervation of the uh, ciliary muscle, uh, which is uh, important for the, uh, for the accommodation of the lens uh, for the uh, near vision. Uh, uh, so this is the two uh, targets for the parasympathetic part of the ciliary ganglion. So uh, uh, sphincter muscle of the pupil for the narrowing of the size of the uh, pupil, uh, which is called meiosa, and the ciliary muscle for the, uh, for the uh, accommodation of the lens of the eye uh, for uh, near uh, vision. So this is uh, one explanation, as I said, that it's necessary to uh, say about the parasympathetic root. And as you see, the only structure that is synopsing is preganglionic uh, fiber, which is originated from the edinger westphal nucleus, is going to the oculomotor nerve, and it's going to the inferior uh, branch of the oculomotor nerve, uh, which has a communicating branch with the ciliary uh, ganglion, uh, which is making the parasympathetic root. And uh, then this preganglionic fiber, which is green, is synapsing with the postganglionic and is uh, carried by the short ciliary nerve to this two target muscle that we, um, we mentioned. Uh, regarding the sympathetic root, we already said for all four parasympathetic ganglion, so the sympathetic group originated is a ciliospinal center C8 T1 segment. It's a preganglionic sympathetic fiber is arising from that center and is uh, uh, going to the superior cervical ganglion, then via the uh, internal carotid plexus and the branches of the internal carotid artery here, for example, ophthalmic artery, it's uh, going to the ciliary ganglion, this blue color, 
is making a sympathetic route. It doesn't synapse inside the ganglion. It's passing through the short ciliary nerve and it reached to the target organ that we said that orbitalis muscle, uh, the tarsal muscle and the dilator muscle of the pupil. So, uh, and of course, the uh, smooth muscle of the vessels and the sweat glands in the face region. The sensory root is uh, one of the branch of the trigeminal nerve. And in this case, it's the branch of ophthalmic nerve, which is the nasociliary uh, nerve. And uh, uh, here it uh, has, has a connection with the ciliary uh, ganglion as a, as, a, as a sensory root. And uh, uh, again, this uh, sensory uh, root, it doesn't, and fiber, it doesn't synapse, it just pass through the ganglion. It reached to the short ciliary, uh, ciliary nerve and is innervating the the eyeball. Uh, uh, you see also the long ciliary nerve is the another uh, source for the sensitive innervation of the eyeball and also the cornea, uh, uh, which is uh, making the another uh, another route uh, for the sensory route for the uh, for the uh, for the ciliary ganglion. So the uh, nasociliary nerve, uh, the branch of that, it's passing through the ganglion, uh, or the ciliary ganglion, and this branch, it's uh, entering the posterior uh, superiorly, uh, uh, from the posterior superior aspect of the ganglion, and is carrying the sensory fiber, passing through the ganglion, and it continue along the short ciliary nerve uh, uh, to the eyeball. Uh, so this uh, fiber, they are responsible for the sensory innervation of all part of the eyeball. And uh, also uh, uh, we can see in some literature, you see the blue color that uh, the uh, uh, long ciliary nerve also uh, is carrying the uh, sympathetic uh, part also of the, or sympathetic post ganglionic fiber from the superior cervical ganglion also through this uh, this uh, this uh, passage. So this is about the uh, ciliary uh, ganglion. Another parasympathetic ganglion is pterygopalatine ganglion. Pterygopalatine ganglion is the parasympathetic ganglion which is located uh, inside the pterygopalatine fossa and the parasympathetic cranial nerve which is uh, carrying the preganglionic parasympathetic fiber to this ganglion is facial nerve, cranial nerve number seven. Facial nerve has parasympathetic nucleus in the brain stem, uh, which is called superior salivatory nucleus, or another name is the dorsal nucleus of the facial nerve. From this nucleus is uh, arising the parasynaptic or paraganglionic uh, parasympathetic fiber uh, to the branch of the facial nerve, which is carrying this preganglionic parasymp uh, parasympathetic fiber and is greater petrosal nerve or nervus petrosus uh, major, which is a part of the intermediate part of the uh, facial nerve. This preganglionic fiber is, of course, is reaching to the pterygopalatine ganglion, which is a parasympathetic ganglion. And of course, like the other parasympathetic uh, fiber for the other parasympathetic ganglion is synapsing with the postganglionic uh, fiber uh, of the uh, of the parasympathetic fiber and the postganglionic fiber is uh, carried uh, uh, carried to the to the uh, branches of the maxillary uh, nerve which is a branch of the trigeminal, second branch of the trigeminal uh, nerve. And it reached to the various uh, glands, uh, like a lacrimal gland, the mucous glands in the nasal region, and uh, in the palatine, the hard and soft uh, palate. So uh, this, is, this is the general description of the passage of the parasympathetic uh, uh, pathway for the pterygopalatine ganglion that uh, we are going to discuss the details. And as we mentioned, uh, you have to explain the uh, not only the parasympathetic route, but also you have to uh, explain the uh, 
the uh, the sympathetic and par and sensory route for this uh, ganglion uh, as well. So you can see the location of the uh, parasympathetic ganglion uh, 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 inside the uh, inside the uh, pterygopalatine fossa, and uh, we said that the uh, um, parasympathetic uh, fiber is carrying from the superior salivatory nucleus of the facial nerve, uh, and uh, the postganglionic uh, fiber they are carried by the branches of the maxillary. Uh, nerve and uh, this maxillary nerve uh, it uh, gives one of the branch which is called the uh, zygomatic uh, nerve and uh, this uh, zygomatic nerve uh, then it has a communicating branch with the lacrimal uh, nerve that we are going to discuss and uh, is reaching to the lacrimal gland for the secretion of the lacrimal uh, gland and also it has a, a bunch of the nerves that they are called pterygopalatine nerves or the ganglionic nerves. Those uh, nerves, uh, they are the uh, uh, superior posterior nasal nerve, uh, the uh, superior inferior posterior nasal nerve, nasopalatine nerve, the pharyngeal nerve, the lesser palatine nerve, greater palatine nerve, pharyngeal nerve, and uh, also the tonsillar uh, branches. So all these nerves, these seven nerves that I mentioned, it, they are responsible for innervation of the secretomotor innervation. It means the parasympathetic innervation uh, for the increasing the secretion of the glands and uh, uh, also supplying of the smooth muscles of the vessels uh, in the uh, uh, corresponding area. It means that the soft palate uh, it means that the heart palate, uh, it means the isthmus fauceum, it means the nasopharynx, and it uh, means that the posterior aspect of the nasal cavity, the glands, and the uh, upper part of the uh, buccal uh, uh, mucosa of the uh, buccal region. So uh, to go uh, the uh, more specific uh, part uh, of the uh, uh, pregangalionic fiber, as you see, it's carried by the uh, parasympathetic, pregangalionic parasympathetic, it's carried by the greater petrosal nerve branch of the facial, arising from the superior salivatory nucleus, uh, is uh, uh, joining with the uh, pregang with the postgangalionic fiber of the sympathetic, as we mentioned it as usual. The pereganglionic sympathetic is arising from the ciliospinal center T1C8. It's going uh, via the sympathetic trunk to the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion is synapsing with the postganglionic sympathetic, is carrying by the internal carotid plexus and as a deep petrosal nerve. And this deep petrosal nerve and the uh, greater petrosal nerve. Uh, which is very important, the greater petrosal nerve, it's carrying, uh, the, carrying the uh, pereganglionic parasympathetic fiber, but the deep petrosal nerve is carrying the uh, postganglionic uh, sympathetic fiber, and they make the nerve to the pterygoid canal, uh, or uh, nervi uh, canalis pterygoidei, and uh, here, the only parasympathetic fiber, the preganglionic parasympathetic fiber is synapsing, and then it goes to the all branches that I mentioned it. So uh, from the maxillary uh, nerve. So here you see a branch of the trigeminal, which is responsible for carrying the postganglionic fiber is the maxillary nerve and its branches. So respectively, the uh, superior posterior nasal branch, inferior posterior nasal branch, nasopalatine nerve, greater palatine nerve, uh, lesser palatine nerve, pharyngeal branch, and tonsillar branches. So they are innervating all this area. So uh, uh, greater and lesser palatine nerve, uh, they are entering through the palat palatine canal and the oral surface of the uh, palate and responsible for innervation of greater and palatine uh, and the uh, soft and uh, hard palate. Uh, then the nasal branches that they are responsible for innervation of the posterior two-third of the nasal gland uh, and uh, also the pharyngeal nerve 
is uh, supplying the mucosa and glands of the nasopharynx. The tonsil tonsillar branch is innervating the palatine tonsil and the zygomatic nerve that uh, in the, uh, this picture you can see that the zygomatic nerve it has uh, here is a branch of maxillary nerve, but it has a communicating branch with the lacrimal nerve. So the zygomatic nerve is carrying the uh, post-ganglionic fiber through the communicating branch with the lacrimal nerve to the lacrimal gland and the lacrimal gland uh, uh, causing the secretion of the uh, uh, tears from the lacrimal glands. So the area of the territory of this, uh, uh, this uh, pterygopalatine ganglion. So here, uh, the schema of the uh, this that uh, I we mentioned it. So this is the preganglionic parasympathetic fiber through the greater petrosal branch of the fascial nerve arising from the superior salivatory nucleus, the parasympathetic nucleus of the fascial nerve. This is the post ganglionic sympathetic fiber as a deep petrosal nerve. These two together they make the nerves of the pterygoid canal. Uh, then it enter to the pterygopalatine uh, ganglion and the uh, parasympathetic only synapsing with the post ganglionic and it's going to the all these branches that I said uh, together with the zygomatic uh, nerve which is communicating with the lacrimal nerve and then is carrying to the lacrimal gland. The post ganglionic sympathetic it doesn't synapse like a blue color it just pass through and it going again the same pathway and also the same pathway for all these seven branches for the heart palate, soft palate, uh, nasopharynx, and uh, uh, tonsil uh, that we mentioned it. And finally, the sensory root, it's the uh, second branch of the trigeminal nerve, which is maxillary nerve and all the branches that we uh, mentioned it. So this is regarding the uh, pterygopalatine ganglion. Next gan ganglion parasympathetic Next parasympathetic ganglion is the submandibular ganglion. Uh, this is interesting uh, uh, because the facial nerve not only uh, uh, responsible for the uh, giving the preganglionic parasympathetic fiber for pterygopalatine ganglion, but also for the submandibular ganglion. So it means that the parasympathetic nucleus which is the superior salivatory nucleus or the dorsal nucleus of the facial nerve is the same, which is sending the preganglionic uh, parasympathetic fiber to the intermediate part of the facial nerve. And then not via the greater petrosal nerve, but via another branch of the facial nerve, which is corda tympani, uh, is carrying the preganglionic fiber uh, parasympathetic fiber, the preganglionic parasympathetic fiber to the submandibular ganglion, which is of course synapsing inside the ganglion, and then the postganglionic fiber, uh, it must be going to the uh, one of the branches of the trigeminal, which is the branch of mandibular nerve, which is the lingual nerve, and it reached to the submandibular gland and the sublingual gland, and also the minor saliva salivatory gland which are located in the floor of the mouse and the anterior two third of the tongue. So uh, here is the uh, uh, parasympathetic, paragangalionic parasympathetic uh, fiber from the branch of the horda tympani, the branch of the facial nerve, and is carrying by the lingual nerve. Uh, for the last uh, parasympathetic ganglion, which is the ganglion oticum or otic ganglion, which is located in the uh, infratemporal uh, fossa, the nerve which is responsible for the parasympathetic innervation is the glossopharyngeal nerve, the cranial nerve number nine. And that's why its uh, parasympathetic nucleus is called the inferior salivatory nucleus, nucleus salivatorius caudalis or inferioris. Uh, and uh, this nucleus is sending the preganglionic fiber uh, or parasympathetic preganglionic parasympathetic fiber via the tympanic nerve, uh, branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve, of course, which is then it enters to the middle ear in uh, this uh, tympanic uh, nerve, 
and it's uh, inside the middle ear around the region of the promontorium. You know that is making a tympanic plexus after the receiving of the sympathetic nerve via the uh, corticotympanic nerves. And uh, from this tympanic plexus is coming out the lesser petrosal nerve, which is carrying the preganglionic fiber to the ganglion oticum uh, below the foramen oval or oval foramen. And then the post ganglionic fiber uh, is carried. It must be a branch of the trigeminal nerve, which is auriculotemporal nerve and its branch of mandibular nerve, which is the third branch of trigeminal nerve, is carrying it to the parotid uh, gland. So uh, here is the details of this two ganglion that we mentioned. It's uh, first uh, I described the uh, submandibular ganglion, which is located in the submandibular triangle uh, in the neck region. And uh, we said that the nerve, parasympathetic nerve responsible for this ganglion is facial nerve uh, with its uh, parasympathetic ganglion superior salivatory uh, nucleus. Uh, it's uh, from the uh, facial nerve, uh, the descending part of the facial nerve, approximately half a centimeter above the stylomastoid foramen. Uh, so uh, it's giving a branch which is called horda tympani. Uh, it's carrying this pereganglionic parasympathetic fiber, is passing this horda tympani through the middle ear and is uh, coming out to the infratemporal fossa via petro tympanic fissure uh, to the infratemporal fossa. Uh, from dorsal side, it's uh, giving its parasympathetic fiber and also the taste fiber uh, to the lingual nerve. And now the lingual nerve is carrying this preganglionic fiber to the submandibular gland. And via the ganglionar branches, it's uh, giving it to the submandibular gland. It's making the increasing of the secretion. Some fiber is returning back to the lingual nerve and it reached to the the sublingual gland and also is causing the secretion, increasing the secretion of the sublingual uh, uh, gland. And also they are on the floor of the mouth and anterior two thirds of the tongue. There are the small salivary gland that they are causing also the secretion of this uh, salivary gland in anterior two thirds of the tongue. So uh, this is the, this is the uh, uh, parasympathetic uh, pathway of the of the um, uh, uh, parasympathetic root or pathway of the submandibular gland, and of course the pereganglionic and postganglionic here they are synopsing at this submandibular ganglion. The um, the uh, sympathetic root is ab absolutely is the same from the ciliospinal center T1 or C8 is going to the superior cervical ganglion and postganglionic fiber via the uh, one of the branches, internal carotid plexus, and also the branches of external carotid plexus, mainly facial and lingual artery. So in reaching to this, um, uh, this ganglion, it doesn't synapse and it's uh, reaching to the submandibular, sublingual, and small salivary gland. Uh, as you know, the sympathetic causing the decreasing of the uh, of the uh, sal uh, of the saliva or the secretion of the saliva and sensory root of course is must be a branch of trigeminal nerve which is in this case is the lingual nerve regarding the otic ganglion uh, that is located uh, under the oval foramen and uh, nearby to the uh, to the mandibular uh, nerve and is located in the infratemporal uh, fossa, the nerve which is responsible for the parasympathetic innervation is the glossopharyngeal nerve with its parasympathetic nucleus, which is called inferior salivatory nucleus, is uh, sending the preganglionic fiber, uh, and uh, the preganglionic fiber uh, is uh, giving the branch, uh, specifically at the level of the inferior ganglion, uh, as a tympanic nerve. And this tympanic nerve is uh, entering to the middle ear. If you want to see the detail here, it's the tympanic nerve is a branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve, which is coming uh, at the region of the promontory. Uh, this tympanic nerve is carrying the preganglionic parasympathetic fiber and sensitive fiber. 
for the middle ear, and also they are receiving the carotico-tympanic nerves, which are the sympathetic, and they are arising from the, again, superior cervical ganglion, absolutely the same. And uh, they, in this case, uh, they are making a tympanic plexus uh, at this area, at the promontory of the middle ear. And from this uh, tympanic uh, plexus, it's arising the nerve, which is called lesser petrosal nerve. And this lesser petrosal nerve, it reaching and still is carrying the uh, preganglionic parasympathetic fiber, which was originated from the uh, inferior salivatory nucleus to the otic ganglion here is synapsing with the post ganglionic parasympathetic fiber and here you need the uh, branch of the uh, trigeminal nerve which is in this case is auriculotemporal nerve which is a branch of mandibular nerve and this auriculotemporal nerve is carrying the post ganglionic parasympathetic uh, innervation which is the effector and the secretomotor to the parotid gland and the target organ is parotid gland for the otic ganglion and in this case is making a secretion of the uh, parotid gland. So uh, the similarity, the same, the sympathetic root is from the uh, ciliospinal uh, center C81, superior cervical ganglion and the postganglionic via the internal carotid plexus uh, to the otic ganglion and it's reaching to the uh, to the parotid and the sensory innervation or sensory root for in this case is the auricular temporal nerve branch of the mandibular nerve which is a branch of the trigeminal uh, nerve so uh, this is about the uh, parasympathetic uh, ganglions uh, uh, that it's uh, very important and always you have to uh, talk about the three fiber, the uh, sympathetic, the, the parasympathetic, which is always synapsing inside the ganglion, and the uh, sympathetic, uh, and uh, also the uh, and also the sensory root uh, for all these three ganglion and the nerves that they are uh, they are associated with this ganglion. So for uh, recapitulation, please remember for each parasympathetic ganglion, you have to explain the uh, parasympathetic root, uh, how the preganglionic uh, arising from the parasympathetic nucleus of the cranial nerve that we already mentioned, the place of the uh, synapsing of the preganglionic with the postganglionic. Uh, so please pay attention only parasympathetic uh, fiber, they are synapsing inside the parasympathetic ganglion. Then you have to uh, uh, explain the uh, sensitive route uh, for each ganglion, parasympathetic ganglion, uh, which is a branch of the uh, one of the branch of the trigeminal nerve. It must be, and remember that it's uh, uh, just passing through the parasympathetic uh, uh, ganglion. It doesn't synapse and it's uh, responsible for the sensitive innervation of the target. And then finally, you have to uh, explain the uh, sympathetic route that we said it uh, for the simplifying uh, of the uh, knowledge always is coming from the segment C8, C, uh, T1, uh, ciliospinal uh, center, lateral horn of the C8, T1, and then it goes to the uh, uh, preganglionic sympathetic fiber, it goes to the superior cervical ganglion and uh, uh, which is here and then uh, it's uh, the post ganglionic fiber parallel with the wall of the artery is just passing through the ganglion again doesn't synapse and it reached to the target organ so uh, for the ciliary ganglion uh, the sensitive root is the uh, ophthalmic nerve from the first branch of the trigeminal for the pterygopalatine is a maxillary nerve, uh, the second branch of the trigeminal, and for the submandibular and uh, otic ganglion, it's the uh, sensitive root and the uh, uh, nerve that is carrying the post ganglionic uh, parasympathetic fiber uh, is the mandibular nerve, third branch of the trigeminal nerve. Uh, for the submandibular is lingual, for the otic is auriculotemporal uh, uh, nerve. 
uh, then uh, we after the uh, this four cran uh, the three cranial nerve that they are taking part for the uh, uh, sending the preganglionic parasympathetic fiber to four parasympathetic ganglion. Then uh, uh, we have the vagus nerve that uh, uh, the details of this nerve we are going to discuss in the cranial nerve. But just to know that the vagus nerve gives rise to the visceral branch along, uh, along its course. The parasympathetic nucleus of the vagus nerve is called the dorsal nucleus of the vagus nerve or posterior nucleus of the vagus nerve. It doesn't have any other specific name. And uh, the periganglionic fiber, they are uh, going and they are carrying near to the organ, the ganglion that they are near to the organ. They are ganglion intramurale, they call it, because uh, these uh, uh, branches, uh, these uh, uh, visceral branches along, uh, along the course of the vagus, uh, they are contributing to the plexus, which is associated with the thoracic uh, 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 viscera or organs or the uh, large prevertebral plexus in the abdomen and pelvis. So uh, many of these plexuses also, they have uh, sympathetic fiber also uh, like a cardiac uh, plexus. Uh, so uh, just uh, to remember that uh, this vagus is uh, innervating the thoracic organ and uh, esophagus, uh, stomach, uh, intestine, pancreas, uh, liver, uh, and the territory of the vagus is finishing at the level of the left colic flexor or splenic uh, flexure or lienal uh, flexure. Uh, so here is the example of the uh, of the uh, innervation of the uh, bronchi, uh, like a, a bron a bronchial plexus or pulmonary plexus uh, that is uh, innervated, uh, the autonomic innervation of the tracha and bronchi. It's, it's the parasympathetic and sympathetic as usual uh, they are antagonists to each other, parasympathetic, they make the uh, excitatory and uh, effect and uh, sympathetic, it's making the uh, inhibitory. Uh, it means that the uh, uh, parasympathetic stimulation of the local uh, ganglia promotes the secretion uh, of, the, of the bronchial gland and the construction of the uh, of the uh, bronchial uh, passage. It means the construction of the muscles in the uh, bronchiolus. Uh, the, they are called the spiral muscle. This is a, this is a smooth muscle. And uh, uh, the sympathetic is vice versa, is adrenergic uh, uh, and uh, receptor, and they are uh, releasing the, of the norepinephrine, and uh, they are making the dilatation of the uh, bronchiolus and decreasing the secretion of this uh, area. Uh, and uh, that's why it's uh, an asthmatic attack. Uh, so the spray that the, the patients they are using, they contain the uh, epinephrine, uh, which has the inhibitory effect in the, in the smooth muscle and also the uh, blood vessels in this uh, area and it causing the dilatation. So Again, the example of the antagonist act active of the uh, parasympathetic and uh, sympathetic. So, of course, the parasympathetic uh, branch, it's from the vagus nerve, uh, from the dorsal nucleus of the vagus uh, in the uh, cranial, in the brain stem. Then, uh, as we mentioned it before, it's very important, uh, the entering, uh, uh, entering, uh, entering uh, system that uh, nowadays uh, they count it as a separate system or they count it as a, a autonomic uh, nervous system. Uh, this system is consists of motor and sensory neuron and their support cells, which form two interconnected plexuses the mientric and submucosal nerve plexuses that you are familiar with that in the structural of the wall of the gastrointestinal uh, tract. And each of these plexus they, uh, is formed by the ganglia, which uh, houses the nerve cells body uh, and associated cell, and also the bundle of the nerve fibers, which are passed between the ganglia and uh, from the ganglia into the surrounding tissue. So they are interconnected to each other. 
So these sensory and motor neurons within this enteric system, uh, they are controlling the reflex activity within the uh, wall or between the part of the gastrointestinal tract. The reflex is regulating the peristaltic movement, the secretomotor activity, and the vascular tone. So this activity can occur independently of the brain and the spinal cord, uh, and also it can be modified by input from the preganglionic parasympathetic and postganglionic uh, sympathetic uh, fiber. So the sensory information from this uh, enteric system as a, a, a visceral uh, afferent fiber, they are tying back to the CNS by visceral sensory fiber. So they are the visceral afferent or visceral sensory fiber uh, that you know the uh, pathway. So uh, regarding this uh, enteric uh, uh, nervous system, it's the intrinsic uh, nervous system of the bowel or intestine, and it consists of the small group of the neurons that uh, form inter connected uh, microscopically visible gondolia in the wall of the digestive uh, 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 tract. Uh, there are uh, two uh, main division uh, of the, uh, these uh, nerves, and they are one of them, uh, they are meantric uh, plexus. This is the meantric plexus, which is called Auerbach plexuses. Uh, these uh, Auerbach plexuses, uh, they are located between the longitudinal and the circular layer of the uh, muscular fiber uh, or uh, uh, muscular layer of the gastrointestinal tract. And the, the other is the submucosal uh, uh, plexus or Meissner plexus. Uh, this submucosal layer is further is divided to the external and internal, which is called the Meissner plexus. And uh, uh, this network of the neurons uh, that you can uh, see, uh, they are the foundation for the autonomic uh, reflex pathway. Uh, so in principle, uh, they can function without external, in, uh, uh, external innervation, but their activity uh, is really uh, modulated by the sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, nervous system. The activity is uh, influencing by enteric nervous system, including the uh, motility, the uh, peristaltic movement, as we said, secretion of the digestive tube, and also the uh, local intestinal uh, blood uh, flow. Uh, so as you see, uh, um, we said that the, is the, the digest, the uh, parasympathetic division of the ANS is called rest and digest, but is not always uh, true for, uh, for um, uh, every part of the body and the uh, sympathetic that we said is fight and flight also is not true for all uh, of the body. Uh, here there are the three examples. Uh, here is the excitatory, uh, excitatory um, uh, parasynaptic uh, cholinergic parasympathetic fiber, which is terminating to the uh, excitatory cholinergic neurons and uh, promoting the uh, the uh, the intestinal motility, peristaltic movement for the mixing of the content of the intestine and facilitate, uh, uh, they are facilitating for the absorption of the content of the uh, uh, of the uh, gastrointestinal tract. But uh, here you can see that the, uh, the parasympathetic fibers synapse with the inhibitory uh, ganglion cells that uh, they are using the uh, non-cholinergic, non-adrenergic uh, transmitters, and uh, this uh, NCNA, uh, they are uh, they are transmitting, uh, and, and the transmitters they are usually uh, uh, neuropeptics, and uh, they are inhibiting the uh, 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 intestinal motility. And uh, here uh, it's uh, showing the sympathetic fiber. Uh, that uh, they are not that much, uh, uh, um, uh, the number is not that much in the wall of the uh, intestine, in the muscular uh, part, and uh, the post-synapting uh, uh, adrenergic fiber is uh, usually inhibiting the motor and secretory uh, neurons in this uh, plexus. 
So uh, this is uh, regarding of the uh, of the uh, intestine uh, innervation and the effect of the parasympathetic and sympathetic, and uh, which is called enteric uh, uh, system. Another center for the parasympathetic division of the ANS is the sacral region. So in the sacral region, the periganglionic parasympathetic fiber uh, form special visceral nerves uh, that they are called the pelvic splanchnic nerves. This pelvic splanchnic nerve originated from the anterior rami of the S2, S3, S4, and entering to the pelvic extension of the large prevertebral plexus uh, form around the abdominal aorta. Uh, this fiber, they are distributing to the pelvic and uh, abdominal viscera or organs, and mainly along the blood vessels. Uh, these post ganglionic motor neuron are in the wall of the organ. So be careful. We said that the, for ganglion, uh, they are absolutely near or in the wall of the uh, organs, the ganglion, they are located. In organs of the gastrointestinal uh, system, uh, this preganglionic fiber uh, usually uh, don't have a post ganglionic parasympathetic uh, motor neuron in the pathway. Uh, but uh, the preganglionic fiber synapsing directly on neuron in the ganglia of the uh, enteric system that we uh, mentioned it. So, uh, so uh, this uh, intermedial lateral nucleus in the lateral horn of the S2, S3, S4, uh, S4 uh, they are sending the preganglionic uh, fiber. Uh, that uh, they are uh, synapsing with the postganglionic uh, at the ganglion pelvinum, they call it. They are uh, that uh, is in the wall of the uh, organs, so that's why they call it diffuse uh, ganglion. And uh, then they are reaching via the postganglionic fiber to the uh, uh, target organ. So and the target. Uh, it's the, uh, the part of the gastrointestinal tract below the level of the left colic flexure or lienar flexure or splenic flexure is uh, innervating the muscle of the urinary bladder, uh, musculus detrusor, if you remember, and also is innervating musculus sphincter urethra, is causing the erection in the, uh, in the penis or uh, clitoris. Uh, so remember, the erection is parasympathetic and the ejaculation is uh, sympathetic. Uh, so for the recapitulation, the portion of the uh, intestine near to the left colic flexure or distal to the left colic flexure, and also the all pelvic viscera or organs, they are supplying with the uh, sacral part of the parasympathetic nervous system. And the uh, efferent fiber, they are emerging from the anterior sacral foramen in the ventral root uh, of the segment S2, S4. And the uh, fiber, they are collected into the bundle to form the pelvic splanchnic nerve. And uh, this uh, pelvic splanchnic nerve, they are mixing with the sympathetic fiber uh, and synapsing in the ganglia in or near to the organ. So this is the recapitulation of this parasympathetic uh, part. And uh, also uh, is important to know that uh, uh, the passage of the, uh, the visceral afferent. So we talked about the afferent fibers, uh, how they are passing, but uh, we, the autonomic nervous system also, they are carrying the uh, sensory pathway, the visceral, so they are pain from the organ or uh, uh, stretching uh, of the of the wall of the organ they, they can cause some uh, 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 sensation so this uh, sensation they are uh, uh, this uh, they are the fiber that they are called visceral afferent or visceral sensory uh, fiber that they are via this uh, uh, for example here is showing this splanchnic nerve or the uh, another nerve, the lesser splanchnic nerve, or another uh, visceromotor fiber, they are going to the paravertebral ganglion 
uh, and paravertebral uh, sympathetic or sympathetic trunk without synapsing they are entering to the spinal nerve via white ramus communicans and then it's going to the dorsal root ganglion or spinal ganglion which is synapsing and then it's going to the uh, to the dorsal root and the posterior root of the posterior horn of the spinal uh, cord so uh, so as a reflex it can be uh, stimulated via the efferent pathway that we already uh, mentioned so it's important uh, to see that the parasympathetic mainly is uh, supplying the uh, head uh, region and also from this important point uh, which is the territory of the vagus is uh, finishing uh, usually the parasympathetic is uh, concentrating in the organs uh, uh, till here is the treatment of the vagus and distal to that is the pelvic splanchnic nerve uh, but sympathetic not only the organ but also is uh, responsible for the periphery for the <coughs> sorry blood supply uh, or blood flow peripheral uh, blood flow uh, then uh, it's uh, important to know that uh, around the abdominal aorta uh, you can see the uh, nearby the large branch of the aorta. Uh, so you have a nerve uh, plexus, and uh, those plexuses they are mixture of the mixture of the uh, nerves uh, that they are uh, innervating the different uh, viscera, and uh, uh, this uh, nerve plexus they are. Uh, nearby this uh, big branch of the uh, aorta they are making some uh, ganglion uh, we already talked about the greater lesser and uh, least uh, splanchnic uh, nerves and uh, here uh, for sure you have heard about the solar plexus another name for that is the uh, celiac uh, 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 plexus and uh, this uh, uh, solar or celiac plexus uh, uh, is called solar plexus because of its uh, radiating nerve fiber. Uh, so it's a complex network of the nerve located in the abdomen and uh, near uh, where the uh, where the uh, celiac trunk, superior mesenteric uh, artery, and renal artery they are uh, coming out of the of of the abdominal aorta. Uh, it's plex this plexus is formed by a part by the greater and lesser uh, splanchnic nerve on both sides uh, and uh, also uh, uh, the fibers from the anterior and posterior uh, vagal trunk as well so as you see this plexus is a mixture of the sympathetic mainly sympathetic and uh, some uh, parasympathetic fiber and this uh, celiac uh, plexus uh, they are consist of the uh, celiac ganglia they are the left and right uh, celiac ganglion dexter and uh, sinister uh, and uh, they are interconnecting and they have the interconnecting uh, fiber uh, uh, between each other so uh, this uh, plexus solar is clinically important if somebody uh, for example in box uh, get um, uh, heated or, or somebody hit in this area of the abdomen uh, so it can cause a sudden uh, vaso, uh, vasodilatation of the blood vessels and uh, suddenly the blood pressure is uh, dropped down and the patient is uh, fainted uh, uh fainting and they fall down so this is the mechanism of the uh stimulation of the uh this uh, nerve plexus at the solar uh, plexus or the celiac uh, plexus uh here so of course uh, at the level of the superior mesenteric we have the uh, sup uh, superior and inferior mesenteric plexus here is the inferior mesenteric plexus and uh, we have the uh, hypogastric superior and inferior the hypogastric the superior hypogastric plexus is located at the level of the uh, um, bifurcation of the abdominal aorta to the uh, right and left common uh, iliac 
and the inferior hypogastric uh, plexus is located where the internal ilia uh, uh, artery is arising from the common uh, uh, iliac uh, uh, vessels. And of course, uh, at this uh, region of these plexuses, uh, you have the ganglion. We have the celiac ganglion. We have paired. The, there is a right and left. Uh, then we have uh, one uh, uh, superior mesenteric ganglion, uh, and uh, also one uh, inferior mesenteric ganglion here. And remember here also we have two uh, uh, um, ganglion, which is called orticorenal. Uh, ganglion, and uh, we have the right side and the left side. Uh, and uh, uh, before uh, they didn't so much pay attention to this uh, ganglion, aortico renal ganglion, but uh, nowadays they find out that ha they have very important role for the regulation of the blood flow uh, to the kidney. So uh, by the uh, medication and influencing to this ganglion, they can. Uh, adjust and regulate the uh, blood flow to the uh, kidney. So uh, this is an important uh, part of this uh, complex uh, plexus of the nerve. And uh, here is the recapitulation of the location of the uh, this uh, plexus, uh, the celiac ganglion or solar plexus uh, at uh, this level superior uh, uh, plexus, superior mesenteric uh, ganglion and plexus at, at the level of L1, L2, uh, and uh, so uh, the aortic plexus uh, L2 uh, 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 here, and the inferior mesenteric uh, uh, ganglion and plexus at the level of L3, uh, and uh, as we said, the superior hypogastric, uh, they are at the bifurcation of the aorta L4, L5, and the inferior hypogastric plexus at the level of the uh, arising of the internal internal uh, iliac uh, artery uh, at the level of approximately uh, S, uh, S1. And uh, here, uh, finally, you can see the uh, hypogastric nerves, uh, which is here. And these hypogastric nerves, uh, they are uh, communicating uh, between the superior hypogastric plexus and the uh, uh, and, uh, uh, inferior hypogastric plexus. Uh, usually, this hypogastric uh, uh, nerve, they are the sympathetic nerve, and they are carrying the input from the approximately T12 till uh, L, L3 uh, segments of the spinal cord. And the main function of this hypogastric uh, uh, nerves is connecting the superior uh, and the inferior uh, hypogastric plexuses. And in this way, they are conveying the uh, sympathetic input uh, to, the, uh, to the inferior hypogastric plexus, which is transmitted to the viscera of the pelvic cavity uh, via uh, the farther branch of this uh, plexuses. So uh, uh, it's uh, important. Uh, this is another picture to show the position of the uh, superior uh, hypogastric plexus and inferior hypogastric plexus uh, and the uh, hypogastric nerve and uh, for in uh, each side uh, of the uh, uh, body. So we have the left side and uh, right side. Uh, and uh, this is the uh, continuation of the superior uh, hypogastric uh, plexus uh, toward the descending to the anterior side of the uh, sacrum. Uh, here is the sacrum and anterior side of the sacrum and it's connecting the, uh, to the uh, inferior hypogastric plexus. Uh, these uh, nerves, uh, they are usually, they are containing the mainly the preganglionic and postganglionic uh, uh, sympathetic, uh, sympathetic uh, fiber, uh, which is uh, descending from the superior uh, superior uh, hypogastric plexus uh, and uh, uh, from the lumbar sprachnic nerve uh, from L1, L2 approximately. Uh, then uh, it contains also the perigondolonic parasympathetic uh, fiber, these uh, uh, nerves that they are originated from the pelvic sprachnic. Uh, nerve, the uh, sacral spinal nerve S2 till S4 that we mentioned, it, 
and uh, ascend from the inferior hypo uh, uh, gastric plexus to the hypo hypogastric nerves. And, and of course, uh, they contain uh, also the visceral sensory fiber uh, that project to the uh, lumbar uh, spinal uh, cord. Uh, so uh, this is the recapitulation of what uh, we said uh, about the whole uh, structure that uh, already uh, we mentioned it and uh, the uh, splanchnic nerves and the level of these plexuses and uh, ganglion. So here is the another slide uh, which is showing you the position of the uh, ganglion, uh, the celiac ganglion or uh, solar ganglion or celiac ganglion. They are left and right, the superior uh, mesenteric uh, ganglion and aorticorenal that we said that it has an important function for the regulation of the blood flow uh, to the uh, kidney. Uh, finally, the uh, last uh, chapter is about the paraganglion. Uh, the plural uh, of this word is called paraganglia. Uh, those are the group of the non-neural cells derived from the neural crest. Uh, they are named for being generally in close proximity to sympathetic ganglia. So that's why they call it paraganglia. Uh, those are very special organs and uh, they are containing the cells and uh, they are uh, related to the uh, nerves that they are carrying the sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, so specifically they are carrying the autonomic nervous system uh, the fiber from this uh, autonomic nervous system so uh, they are essentially there are two types there are the first type they are uh, chromaffine, uh, chromaffine or uh, sympathetic paraganglia made of uh, chromaffin cells and the other, they are the non-chromaffin or parasympathetic paraganglia made of the glomus cell. Uh, they are uh, neuroendocrine uh, cells that uh, the former with the, uh, this, uh, the chromaffine or sympathetic paraganglia, uh, they are, uh, they are uh, uh, primary endocrine, uh, they have primary endocrine function. And the non-chromophine or parasympathetic paraganglia, they are primarily, they are hemoreceptors or baroreceptors. The chromophine paraganglia are connected with the ganglia of the sympathetic trunk uh, and uh, the ganglia of the celiac, renal, adrenal, aortic, and hypogastric plexus that, uh, plexuses that we already discussed. And they are connected near to the adrenal gland and essentially function the same way as the adrenal medulla. It means that they are producing the uh, the khatepol amine. Uh, so uh, this is important to know uh, that uh, the if there is a damage of the uh, medulla, so so the medulla of the adrenal gland is not the only source that is producing khatepol amine, but those. Uh, chromaffin paraganglia or the sympathetic paraganglia, they are also the source for the production of this, uh, these hatapol amines. The largest chromaffin paraganglion, they are the organ of Zuckergandl, and uh, is uh, probably is the largest source of the circulating uh, hatapol amine in fetus and young infants. Uh, but uh, this is by the growing of the child uh, and uh, gradually they are becoming atrophies and uh, it's just a remnant of that is as a microscopical uh, localized uh, paraganglion it will be uh, seen in the elder people. Uh, non chromaffin paraganglia include carotid body uh, bodies uh, and aortic bodies and uh, some uh, other they are located in the ear in the middle ear as a tympanic uh, paraganglia uh, some uh, they are along with the vagus nerve in the larynx and other place like a jugular uh, bulb uh, so uh, those are the uh, paraganglia uh, that uh, is written by check but uh, there are the a specialized uh, organ and they are highly vascularized organ 
uh, that uh, we said that uh, they are chromafine and non-chromafine, uh, but uh, they are uh, taking or giving us the information about the uh, internal uh, uh, environment of the body, uh, which is uh, mainly responsible for that is the parasympathetic uh, paraganglia uh, or non-chromafin paraganglia. And also they are giving uh, us the information about the outer environment. And this is the reaction to the outer environment. And this is the function of the sympathetic paraganglia. So this is the two uh, classification. Uh, also, we can divide it to the uh, internal uh, information about the internal environment, parasympathetic paraganglia, and external environment, the sympathetic uh, paraganglia. And uh, regarding the uh, paras, uh, this is the uh, this is the introduction and about the parasympathetic paraganglia. Uh, for example, the most uh, common uh, there are uh, presoreceptor or baroreceptors uh, that uh, they are located, for example, in the carotid sinus in the beginning of the internal carotid artery, uh, glomus caroticum or the carotid body which is located at the bifurcation of the common carotid artery, which is divided to the internal and external. And uh, this is the uh, hemoreceptor because it's uh, very sensitive to the changing of the concentration of the uh, O2 and CO2 and is innervated by the glossopharyngeal and the uh, vagus cranial nerve number ten, ten, nine and uh, 10. Uh, also, you can find uh, in the parasympathetic paraganglia, the paraganglion supra uh, aorticum, uh, which is uh, specifically is innervated by the uh, uh, vagus nerve, uh, about the baroreceptor or presoreceptors, uh, we said uh, that is uh, also is located, for example, in the carotid sinus. So that's why if you press to this region of the carotid sinus, it can uh, cause uh, uh, the uh, fainting of the uh, patient, especially very common uh, if somebody is sitting in the uh, dental unit chair. Uh, so we have to release the collar region, not to press the uh, carotid sinus. And uh, in this case, uh, you are preventing the fainting of the uh, patient. Another paraganglia also it's in the bulb of the jugular vein. Uh, we said that is in the ear or the in the middle ear. We have the paraganglia tympanicum and other part of the body. Uh, and uh, this uh, connection we are going to discuss in the central nervous uh, system. And uh, uh, the uh, Zucker candle uh, para uh, para uh, uh, ganglion is the typically. We said that for the uh, for the uh, uh, sympathetic uh, paraganglia is classified as a sympathetic paraganglia, and uh, it's located in the lumbar aortic region. Uh, and uh, also uh, we have uh, other uh, other uh, part of the sympathetic. And here, uh, why is uh, important? Uh, here is the bifurcation of the. Uh, uh, common carotid artery to internal carotid artery and external carotid artery. And here is the carotid body or the glomus caroticum. And uh, this uh, part uh, here, you can see very uh, nice uh, in this, uh, uh, in this uh, diagram uh, uh, or in this picture, the common carotid artery, which is divided to the, uh, to the uh, internal and external. So in the uh, bifurcation, you can see a tumor. So uh, 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 this is a tumor of the uh, glomus caroticum or the carotid body is a rare condition, but uh, uh, to uh, be informed that this paraganglia also, it can be a, a, a site for the uh, growing of the tumor. And uh, maybe in future, uh, you can see in your clinical uh, uh, experience. So uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention uh, and uh, uh, best of luck for your study and uh, uh, study.